Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this rapidly growing channel. In this robotics and mechatronics tutorial we explain how to properly interface a HAL Effect 2 phase encoder with an Arduino or ESP32 microcontrollers and how to correctly convert encoder readings to pulses and later on how to convert these pulses to angle measurements. We explain how to correctly detect the rotation direction and how to properly count the pulses and how to use the pulses to measure the angle of rotation. That is, we explain how to write a C Arduino code or ESP32 microcontroller code that will read encoder pulses from the two phases and convert these pulses to an integer variable counting the angle of rotation. You can also modify the code to measure the angular velocity. The main motivation for creating this tutorial comes from the fact that we are creating a series of tutorials on how to build low-cost robotic systems such as robotic arms and mobile robots and how to control these robots by using the robot operating system or ROS. We explain how to build robotic systems from scratch, that is starting from a low-level microcontroller implementation. Let us first briefly describe the experimental setup and later on we will present the wiring diagram. We are using a low-cost DC motor, here it is, with an encoder attached behind. So here is the encoder. It's a Hall effect encoder. It has two phases, phase A and phase B. This is an, an incremental encoder. You can easily purchase these low-cost DC motors with the gearbox, here is the gearbox, and with Hall Effect encoders. Since they have the gearbox integrated together with the motor as well as the encoder, they are ideal for building mobile robots as well as robotic arms where the precision is not of paramount importance. In this video tutorial, we will mainly focus on the encoder and how to properly read the data from the encoder and we will present a wiring diagram for the encoder later on in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will explain how to use this encoder and a motor to develop a servo control system with a PID controller, so stay tuned. We have attached two oscilloscope probes to the two phases of our encoders. And over here you can see two train of pulses, the yellow train and the blue train. These train of pulses are actually readings from the encoder phases. This is the phase A and this is the phase B. You can observe that this phase A or the yellow phase leads the blue phase. And this is a direct consequence of the fact that the motor spins in one direction. If we switch the motor direction of rotation, you will see another scenario. That is, you will see that the blue phase will lead the yellow phase. So let's demonstrate that. Now I change the direction of rotation and you can see what happens. You can see that the phase B is leading the phase A. Later on in this tutorial we will explain how to write the code that will properly detect these pulses and convert them into an integer number measuring an angle of rotation. Also we will explain how to properly detect the direction of rotation. And over here on the computer screen and in Arduino, you can see the detected pulses. That is, these incremental numbers that are continuously increasing are counting the pulses. That is, they are counting the angle of rotation. And in this video tutorial, I will teach you how to write the code that will detect the angle of rotation and display it on the computer screen. Okay, let's start with explanations. First of all, I need to mention that I'm using this motor. 
GA37520 with AB phase incremental hull encoder. Unfortunately, I could not find more information about the encoder. However, that's not a problem since I can experimentally determine everything that I need about this encoder. Here's the wiring diagram. Here, you're looking at the back of my motor where the encoder sits. You can see this magnet over here with two sensors and these wires, that is with this connector. So the first pin on this connector is the motor plus, the second pin is the encoder ground, then the third pin is C1 encoder, as you can see over here, that's the output phase A of the encoder, then the fourth one is the C2 encoder or the output phase B of our encoder, then this pin is used to provide the encoder power and the last pin over here is the motor minus. And that's it, simple as that. Now, let's look at the Arduino wiring diagram. Here it is. It's very simple. As you can see over here, I'm using Mega 2560. However, everything explained in the sequel can be easily generalized and used in the case of other Arduino boards as well as ESP32 boards. The main thing is to figure out what are the interrupt pin of your boards. In the case of this Arduino Mega, the interrupt pins are actually 2, 3, 18, 19, 20, and 21. And consequently, make sure to connect encoder phase A to one of the interrupt pins. I connected it to the pin number 2, as you can see over here. The next thing is to connect the encoder phase B to Arduino pin. This should be a digital read pin or a digital pin and in my case I selected the pin 7. The next thing is to connect the power and the ground of your encoder. I connected the encoder power to Arduino 5 volt here pin, that is this pin over here, and the encoder ground is connected to the Arduino ground, that is to any of these two pins. And that's it. Simple as that. Nothing special. To be able to develop and implement the Arduino code for our encoder, we first need to understand the encoder phases, the train of pulses, and other details. Over here, you can see the oscilloscope measurement when the motor moves in the clockwise direction. We have two phases. This yellow train of pulses represents the phase A, and this blue or light green train of pulses represents the phase B. We can observe that in the clockwise movement, the phase B actually leads the phase A. On the other hand, here is the situation for the counterclockwise rotation. Over here, we can see that the phase A is actually leading the phase B. Next, I will play two movies that are obtained from my oscilloscope. Over here, you can see the real-time measurements when the motor rota rotates clockwise. And you can clearly see that the phase B leads the phase A. On the other hand, over here, you can see the counterclockwise rotation. You can see now that the phase A leads the phase B. There are several approaches for developing the Arduino code and for counting the pulses. We will present two simple approaches. These approaches might not be the most optimal ones. However, since this is an intro tutorial, they will do the work and most likely this is all you need to use the encoder. Let's start with the first approach. The first approach is based on counting the pulses on the rising edge of the phase A. Over here, I created two new sketches that illustrate the two scenarios. Here's the situation when the motor shaft rotates clockwise and here's the situation when the motor shaft rotates counterclockwise. We can observe that if you are rotating in the clockwise direction, whenever the phase A 
rises, the phase B is high. And let's make sure that you understand this. Let's analyze this graph over here. We said that whenever phase A goes from low to high, phase B is high. And you can observe it over here. Rises. Look at the phase B. It's high. Then again, phase A rises. Then let's look at the phase B high. Consequently, whenever we are moving clockwise, whenever, whenever we detect a rising edge of phase A, and if we take the measurement of phase B, phase B will be high. Let's look at the situation when we, when we rotate counterclockwise. Again, we detect the rising edge of phase A. And immediately afterwards, we measure the phase B, and phase B is low. Again, look what's happening here, rising. Let's look at the B, B is low, etc. Here's our pseudo code. First of all, we declare a variable that will count the pulses. Then over here, we define a function, or better to say an interrupt function, that is called on every rising edge of A. Namely, we can program Arduino and we can specify an interrupt function. And this interrupt function will be called whenever phase A rises. That is on the rising edge of the phase A. So what do we do inside? We do this. We do digital read of phase B. If B is high, good. We have detected a clockwise rotation and we simply increment count pulses. Consequently, if the count pulses was zero, it will become one. If it was one, it was, it's going to become two, etc. On the other hand, if B is low, aha, we have detected a counterclockwise rotation and we simply decrease the value of the count pulses for one, that is, we decrement. If, for example, count pulses was five, it's going to become four, etc. And that's the first approach. It's relatively simple. The advantage of this approach is that we are only detecting the rising edge and we do a single digital read. That is, we are not consuming too much of resources of our Arduino. However, this advantage is that the accuracy is not the highest. That is, we can change this code and this principle to have a better accuracy. However, in most of applications, you will need, you will not need a high accuracy. Consequently, this approach might work. The second approach is to count the pulses on both the rising and fall edges of the phase A. In contrast to the first approach, in the second approach, we perform computation or we increment or decrement the pulses on both the rising and fall edges of phase A. So let's analyze what's happening over here. In the first scenarios, when we rotate clockwise, when we detect a rising edge, the value of B is equal to the value of A. That is, both of them are high. Then, let's see what happens when we detect a falling edge and if we take a measurement of phase A and if we take the measurement of phase B, we can observe that both of them are low. That is, they have the same value again. Next, when we detect a rising edge of phase A and if we take the measurement of phase A and phase B, we will observe that they have the same value again. When we detect the falling edge of phase A, and if we take the measurements, we can observe that phase A is low and phase B is low, and consequently, they have the same value. And that's the principle. In any case, either in the case of rising or falling edge, if the motor is rotating clockwise, we will detect the same values of phase A and phase B. That is, Either they're going to be both high or they're going to be both low. Let's analyze the counterclockwise scenario. 
we have detected a rising edge of phase A, and it's high. However, if we now measure phase B, we will observe that it's low. That is, phase A and phase B have different values. One is high, one is low. Then over here, we detected a falling edge, and if we take the measurements of phase A, phase A will be low. However, phase B will be high. Next, we detect a rising edge of phase A, and if we take measurement of phase A, phase A is again high. However, if we take the measurement of the phase B, phase B is low. That is, they have opposite values. So that's the principle. That is, if you're moving in the counterclockwise direction, we will observe that phase A and phase B have different values on both rising and falling edges of phase A. And that's the principle for coding. Our code looks like this. Again, we declare and initialize to zero a variable that will count pulses. Then over here, we define an interrupt function. However, this time, this interrupt function will be called on every rising or falling edge of phase A. What do we do inside? We perform digital read of phase A and phase B, and we check their values. If A and B are both high, that is, they're equal, we detect the clockwise rotation, and we increment count pulses. That is, we increase the count pulses for one. On the other hand, if A and B are not equal, that is, one is high, one is low, or the other way around, then we detected the counterclockwise rotation, then we decrement the variable count pulses, that is, we decrease its value for one. Okay, so what is the disadvantage and advantage of this approach? Let's talk about disadvantage. This second approach increases the measurement result. Actually, let's talk first about the advantage. The second approach increases the measurement resolution and accuracy. That is, that's the main advantage over the first approach. However, the expense is that we are using more digital read calls. This might clog the computational bandwidth of the microcontroller. This is especially true if the motor spins with high RPMs. Also, if you're re reading values from several encoders at the same time, this approach might also clog the computational bandwidth then what will happen? You will introduce delays and you will not be able to accurately obtain angle measurements. Okay, let's start with coding of the first approach. That is, we will count the pulses on every rising edge of phase A. That is here, 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 etc. Open a new Arduino sketch. First of all, let's define the encoder A pin. Our encoder A phase is attached to the pin 2, and this is the interrupt pin. Next, let's define the encoder B phase. This phase is attached to the digital pin 7. Next, let's declare and initialize total pulses. This variable is used to count the total number of pulses, and we need to use volatile long since we will be using this variable inside of this interrupt function. And here is the interrupt function. This interrupt function is called on every rising edge of phase A. Inside we ask, if digital read encoder B, this will return the value of phase B. And we ask if the return value is greater than zero. If the return value is greater than zero, this means that we are moving clockwise and we are going to increment the total pulses. That is, we simply type total pulses plus plus. Initially, if the value was zero, it will become one, then it will become two, three, etc. Otherwise, if encoder B, that is, if the phase B is low, then we decrement or decrease the value for one. And that's it. Simple as that. In our setup function, we need to do several things. 
First of all, we need to tell to Arduino that encoder A phase is input. Similarly, we need to tell that encoder B phase is also input. Then we need to initialize our serial.begin such that we can plot the serial port plot. And over here, we need to use this function attach interrupt. We specify where we want to attach the interrupt. That is, we want to attach the interrupt to encoder A phase, that is, to the pin 2. Then we need to specify the name of the function that will, will be called. In our case, the name of the function is count pulses. And over here, we need to specify that we will call this interrupt function on every rising edge of encoder A phase. And that's it. And over here in a void loop function, we simply print the value of total pulses. That's it. Simple as that. So let's first of all make sure that the board and the port are properly selected. Click on Tools. Click on Board. Make sure that the board is correct. In my case, it's Arduino Mega. Then let's make sure that the communication port is correct. Then let's verify the code without uploading, no errors, and finally, let's upload the code. Done uploading. Let's see the measurements, click on Tools, and open the serial monitor. And over here, you will see 000. Now, I will start rotating manually my motor, and here it is. I rotate it for almost 360 degrees, and I will return back to zero, so I'm almost at zero, and that's it. Now, to measure the angle, you need to measure how many pulses are detected for, 100, for actually 360 degrees. Then you will know how many pulses create certain number of degrees. That is, you will know that every degree is equal to certain amount of pulses, and in that way you can measure the angle. However, you need to do some calibra calibration. You need to figure, figure out this by yourself since the producer doesn't specify this number. Here is the Arduino implementation of the second approach. In this second approach, we count the pulses either on the rising or fall edges of phase A. The first step is to define the phase A and phase B pins. We do it over here. Then we define this variable for storing the total number of pulses. Here is the function that's used to count the pulses. Over here, we perform digital read of phase B and we perform digital read of phase A. And then we compare the values. If the values are different, then we know that we are moving in the counterclockwise direction and we simply decrement total pulses, or better to say, we decrease the value of total pulses for one. Else, we increase total pulses for one. That is, we increment total pulses for one. And that's it. In this case, we are moving actually clockwise. Nothing special. Here is our setup function. We specify that phase A is an input. We specify the phase B pin is also an input. We specify the baud rate. And over here, we attach our interrupt. We call at attach interrupt function. We say that digital pin to interrupt encoder A, that is, the interrupt is attached to the encoder A pin. Over here, we specify the name of the function that's used to call, that's being called as an interrupt, in our case is count pulses, and we specify when the interrupt is being called. The interrupt function is being called on change. This means either on the rising or the fall edge of encoder A phase. And that's it. Here is our void loop. We simply serial print total pulses, and that's it. Let's first of all make sure that the board is selected. 
and let's make sure that the communication port is properly selected. Then let's locally verify the code, make sure there are no errors, and then let's upload the code. Let's open the serial monitor and look what will happen now. I'm going to rotate my motor for 360 degrees and you can see that the value is around 600 something. This is doubled the value from the previous or the first approach. That is we increase the resolution and the accuracy of measurements. And if I go back to zero, I can see that I can successfully decrease the value. That is, I can increase, decrease by rotating back and forward my motor. And that's it. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons and see you in the next video tutorial.